My name's Marilu Medina, and I came here because my parents uh, migrated here. Uh, my dad migrated here from Mexico, and my mom migrated here from California. And so they both came for the same reason, um, was to work in the orchards. Uh, for my dad, it was to work in the orchards, and for my mom, for her parents to work in the orchards. And so um, I grew up work, uh, working or being around the orchards. Um, my childhood was about, uh, a lot about the orchards. I would go uh, to the packing house and watch the packers pack pears and later pack peaches and I would um, go into the orchards and watch my dad, um, watch the crew members pick pears and uh, with their buckets and put them in their, their big uh, boxes. And uh, my mom, as a kid, she actually grew up doing that as well, helping her parents pick pears in the orchards. And, um, and so that's how I came here and uh, the majority of my life I grew up in talent and um, so did my parents and it wasn't until I got older is when I I moved for a little bit but then when we had kids is when I we came back to reside into talent um, even my husband worked in the orchards for I say seven years um, when my kids were really little, our kids were really little. And, um, so yeah, a lot of our, a lot of my memories, childhood memories is, uh, through the orchards. And, and um, in particularly Ron Meyer's orchards, because that's where my dad worked. Yeah. As a child, I think um, a lot of my fondest memories were riding the motorcycle in the orchards. Uh, me and my sister, we would ride in the motorcycles just for fun. And, um, and that we would go down to the creek and we would see the running water. We would go down and look at the ditch and see the canal with the running water. And everything was green. In the summer, there wasn't any smoke. There was never any news about wildfires. Um, it just seemed like a very vivid, colorful childhood memories of, of beautiful mountains and green trees and nothing major to worry about, nothing on the news that would bring fear. Um, it was just growing up and being a kid. Just being a kid is how I felt as a child. Um, it wasn't until I think after middle school, when I was just starting high school, and September 11th happened is when I just, when I started seeing more things on the news and more fear internationally and even locally when things really started to change. And they seem to have continued to change. Now that I have my kids, I compare my childhood to when, to their childhood, and I see that they have had more struggles, or I guess challenge, different challenges, maybe more difficult than, than what I had as a kid. Um, and I, it's a little bit sad seeing that because you would think, after one generation, after another generation of working hard to come from Mexico 
and pick pears and to have an established home to then seeing your children and struggling in that aspect because of the way society has changed and how things are now we have more we have droughts we have fires to worry about um it's like kind of like you're going the opposite like you're going back instead of moving forward and that for me i feel a little bit um it's it saddens me to see that that my kids couldn't have couldn't just be a kid they have to they can be they're a kid but with those those background fears of of um fires and water droughts um covid and and even feeling safe at school is it's definitely has changed um there's no more water in the canals the orchards are gone um we literally lived surrounded by orchards. Our house was in the middle of orchards. And if I, when I go back to where we used to live, there is zero orchards, no, no tree of any sort. Um, so it has definitely changed from when I was a kid till now. And, um, but I'm, what, but I, what, what I'm happy about is I was a, my mom was able to go to high school, to Phoenix High School here, as well as myself. And now my kids are at Phoenix High School. So I think that's kind of a fun tradition that we have here. And, um, and seeing the changes of the high school and the teachers, I've, I feel like there's been a positive changes to that with the new building and um, just I think it's 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 more safer um, I feel very proud to be able to have my kids go to the same high school that I went to and my mom did as well and um, and thankful that my family's here in the Rogue Valley and have that support um, amongst what we're going through right now. And um, so that's just kind of a little aspect of my childhood and um, what uh, I, how I look at it in my perspective. Um, and then looking as, now looking back when we went to the, during the Almeida fire, um, a little background of our home, we lived at Talent Mobile Estates, and we had lived there for 13 years. In fact, my second son was born at Talent Mobile Estates. I didn't make it to the hospital, and, um, and he was born outside in the driveway. Uh, it actually came on uh, the Mel Tribune news. It was front page, and it was a picture of me and, my, and holding my son. And, um, and it said, uh, I think it said something about like a local mom gave birth to, their, to a baby boy after eating a pepperoni pizza. Because literally, I had just got done eating a slice of pizza um, when I said, we need to go to the hospital. Um, we need to go immediately. And I didn't make it. So I actually, I think I have a copy of the articles. I'll have to find it. My sister was able to save one after the fires and she gave it to me. So um, that w that's a fun memory that we have there on Arnold's Road. And, um, and it was just a fun neighborhood. It was a community within a community. You would see kids riding their bikes. Um, it would, I would be, cutting up watermelon and taking it outside for the neighborhood kids with for my kids and take a bike break and eat some watermelon um the neighbors were mellow 
Uh, sometimes if we had an event, we'd you know, knock on the door of the neighbors and hand them a plate of food and share share a plate of food that we had made for the event. So it was really a lovely place to live. Um, it, like I said, it was a community within a community. Um, beautiful people, beautiful families. Uh, there wasn't any reason for us to really want to move other, other than just space. It could be a little bit tight, <laughs> but we made it work. We made it work. My husband, um, he remodeled the place. He, he, you know, little by little, we replaced windows, we replaced doors, floors, uh, put in a new deck, built a new shed, carport. I mean, we did so much improvement to our place to make it our home. Um, it, it really wasn't just like, this is where we live, but we made it to be, have memories, like beautiful memories of, of building it together, of making it our place. And, um, and so to see that go is, is sad. And, and it's where we started our business, where we, we started our get, get our first lawnmower and get our first weed whacker and, and started slowly building our business to um, be self-employed and, and try to make something more than just uh, work hourly in the orchards. We wanted, we wanted to change and we knew we had that potential. And so um, there was just a lot of memories there uh, at Arnold's Road. And um, when the Almeida fires came and just like a lot of people from other people I've been told, um, there wasn't just any time to take anything of value or anything um, that was of memory. You just had to leave, you just had to go. And, um, and so when we did that, um, we had no time to take. We just, we took a, a dresser drawer that had some important things in it and Lily just took the drawer and um, and put it in the truck, and that was pretty much it. I I did tell my kids to take the hamper full, that was full. Well, not full, but it had some dirty clothes in it, and we managed to take the hamper. Um, my think my thinking was there's clothes in there, and I know we use those clothes because they're dirty. So let's just take that. And unfortunately, I had just done laundry maybe two days prior, so there wasn't much in there. But, um, but yep, we took the hamper. I still have that hamper, and I was managed to take it into the car. But other than that, um, I had some other things I wanted to take, but it was just, it was going so fast, and I needed help to carry it out, and everybody was in the car except for me, and they were just waiting for me to leave, and I said, okay, okay. I just left it on the bed and, and, and we just we just left. We we left up Arno's Road where my dad uh, lives and um, we were just there kind of waiting on what our next move was gonna be. And um, my dad was still at work. He was working at Ron Myers at that time and uh, we told him the situation and uh, we went to his backyard and he actually had one tree that was swaying just back and forth. It could literally fall at any moment. And we told him, you need to come home because this tree is about to fall and there's a fire happening. Um, but uh, we didn't get to see my dad in time because we felt like it was bad enough where we just had to leave again. And um, and so we left and, and in talent, it was just as bad as, it, I mean, in Phoenix, it was when we got to Phoenix, it was just as bad as in, in talent. Um, and so I, I told my mom to, to leave her home in Phoenix and to go to her brother's house that we'll be staying at uh, another house in talent that was away from the fires. And so that's, that's what we did. We, um, we stayed overnight in talent. And um, during that stay, my husband had left back to our house to see how things were. And um, that's when I found out that we had lost our home. He took our oldest son. And, uh, and so uh, they have videotape of it. And um, 
you can hear my son whistling in the background, I think kind of like as a distraction of um, what was going on. And, um, and they were able to go inside to where we um, lived, not where we lived, but in the park. And, and, they, and they saw that there was nothing savable, everything was gone. And um, uh, my son did cry. He, 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 they felt, he felt, he felt the reality of what was happening. And um, it, it's, it, I think for me, for, for my son to see that, instead of seeing like, like running into the orchards with the motorcycle and and um, and just playing. Um, instead, he was seeing my first day back to school, having to be at home because of COVID, to seeing my house on fire. Um, was pretty intense for him. It was pretty intense, but he's a strong kid, and I know he he is persevering. And it, it, he always says, well, it is what it is. We move forward and that's what we're exactly doing. Looking back now, I'm just grateful. Like when we, where we were at, my husband had knocked on people's doors to let them know there's a fire, you need to leave. We had a, uh, a lot of, a few senior citizens who lived where we lived. And so um, many of them weren't even aware there was something going on. And, and we got to actually watch them leave, I remember watching them leave and um, so I'm grateful that we were able to knock on my husband was able to knock on doors and and let people know there's a fire um, and you probably should leave but other than that there wasn't much that we could do and just from there we just played it day by day uh, one day at a time in fact that same day of the fires was the first day back to school for my kids uh, luckily, it was in in service school. It was because of COVID, they were doing online schooling, so we didn't have to evacuate them from the middle school or elementary school because they were already at home. And because I was home with my twins, they were six months at the time, um, and thankfully my husband had only worked half day in Ashland, so we were all able to evacuate together. But yes, it was a pretty intense day for, for us, for many people. It was uh, a lot of us were in shock, weren't sure what was going to happen. Uh, we're really thankful that we're just together and safe. There wasn't anything at the time that I could think in my head like, oh, I wish I could have gotten this or that because you're literally just thinking, how grateful you are to be together as a family. Um, materials come and go, but family is what's important. And so that's what kept us strong, I think, is just that we were together. And just the amount of support that we were getting, phone calls and texts of support, I think that helped us to, to know that we weren't alone, that we we're all in this together. Um, but that was, yes, that was our experience of the first day of the Almeida fire. And um, just one of the ex many experiences that we have gone through since, since then. Um, I guess sentimental value of things that we have lost that will pop up in my head from time to time because it's, it's just, um, import, an importance for me um, because prior, prior to um, the Almeida fire, prior to our twins, we had lost our son and um, uh, the, I only had a few things of his that were in the house and like his baby footprints and like um, his baby blanket that I was always put on the bed after I'm done making the bed. Um, and we lost all of that. So you can't really replace those items because um, 
they were there while he was here and now that he's not here you can't replace them so that's one thing that um that saddens me but i'm thankful that we're able to go um to see him at his mark his place of rest and know that he's okay and i think that's what i did my one of the first weeks after the fires i went to make sure he was okay because i felt so bad as a mom i felt like i felt him but i know um when i went i know in my heart that everything was okay so that's kind of one of the hardest things for me was losing those little items that i had left that i can't replace and um and having to move on without having anything in my house to remember him of um other than going to um, his place of rest. But um, I think that just kind of gives me a perspective to know that everything here is temporary and, um, and, uh, and you know, then that's okay because this, this is temporary and what is here, what's after it will be forever. So I'm okay and we'll be okay. And, um, and so that's kind of like the thing with the Almeida that kind of affected me the most was was losing that. Um, but I'm I'm thankful that we have our family and uh, and our girls that they keep us busy, our twins and our teenage boys. Uh, one thing I remember about after the fire, there was a lot of food services, a lot of opportunities. Um, if you're hungry, there's going to be food somewhere. So they had announcements, and even in the uh, Ashton schools, there was food services to Phoenix, to Talent, up to Meffer, um, because so many people were displaced, so many people were everywhere now, spread out in the Rogue Valley. Um, they made sure to provide food for everybody. And so that was great. That was something that we didn't have to worry about. Um, one less thing to worry about and focus on finding a, a permanent solution or semi a semi solution in our situation. We had a lot of moves after the Almeda fire, and one of them was staying at the hotel in Ashland, and um, we had to stay in two different rooms because we we're a big family, and. Um, Unfortunately, they didn't have a room that was jointed together, so my kids were like maybe two rooms down. And um, they had one day decided to spend the night at Grandma's house. I think it was during Christmas time. And the following day, when we were all going to go back, and um, we're, we would just go there to sleep basically, and during the day we would be gone. Um, they went into their room, and their room had been ransacked. Um, someone had got in there, and it was very strange because most of our, all of our stuff was in our room. So it was just, that room was just for them to sleep in. That's, they didn't have anything in there. But just to see how they left the room, they, they pulled the phone out, disconnected it, they moved the dresser, they turned over the bed, the window was open, all the lights were on, the AC was on full blast. I don't know what their attention was. It was, it really left me uncomfortable. But then we let the hotel know and we were able to get a room to all together. But yeah, and um, or when we had, we had opportunity to stay in the um, FEMA trailers and we had a neighbor who I think was not very well and he would be outside with his machete and, and hitting the trailer and going around with it. It just was not a comfortable place to be, so we decided to stay with my mom um, because there wasn't all, I don't think, there wasn't much that they could do from my understanding. Um, but yeah, so it's it's kind of been an odd roller coaster, but I think having 
a place like my mom's, that baseline has made us feel safe. Yeah. Yeah. So, and we know the neighbors there and they know us. So yeah. it's nice <laughs> to be there. Walking distance from the school too. Um, they had uh, spots in Ashland, I think in Mefford, they were doing events during the week, during the weekend, where people would bring shoes and um, clothing and things that um, just people need to to live. And, um, and we were able to get some items, some clothes right away. Um, I found a pair of tennies that were the exact same tennies that I lost in the fires. And so that was really nice. So I was like, those are my shoes. Those are my tennies. So I was able to pick those up. Um, and just so, so grateful we would walk, we would be walking, um, getting some help and random people were like here, um, $10. Like they just wanted to help. They just wanted to give and, and they would just give. And it was just so beautiful to see how people would just come together and just be like here I don't know you but I know you know what happened just uh, here I this is what I have to help and it was just so grateful to see that um, we had a friend family friend who came and he would drop off food, hot food for us every week um, and there was more than plenty of food for not only for us, but for the where we were staying at, um, and so we were we were really grateful for that. Uh, grateful for just the support, the support that we we couldn't even get think about. It was just it was just coming without even thinking, um, and that's what helped us, I think, to move forward quickly. It was challenging to um, to home homeschool with COVID, with COVID and and the girls, but I know the school made it. They try to do the best to make it really easy and relax because every, it was new for everybody. It was new for the students. It was new for the teachers. They didn't want to overwhelm students with homework or um, learning something new that they weren't sure of. So that helped a lot to um, have teachers that were understanding and um, have a classrooms where it wasn't, it was more kind of like review work or light work rather than learning something new and being challenged by it. Cause there's just, there's just too much stress I think for students and teachers to do that. Um, I think only really the, one of the challenges would be like if my, sons how to talk or how to unmute how to make sure the girls were not fussing or kind of away from the computer so that way they could uh, concentrate good in their classrooms but yeah it was definitely different I remember seeing my son's teacher on the computer for the first time and and I remember her watch, looking at all her students from her computer and like she was almost at tears, just like, wow, this is the first day of school online and this is it, this is what we're going to do. And I said, I saw her, his teacher and she was tearing up and I said, wow, they, you know, everybody's in this together. Everybody's in this together. And, um, and yeah, that's how it kind of went. Um, luckily though, because, well, I mean, because the school started the first day of the Mila fire. They went ahead and um, paused school and they started it weeks out so people could um, get adjusted and um, or do what they needed to do uh, while this happened. So luckily we didn't have that stress for a few weeks of them having to um, find, um, uh, be back in school and um, that worked out for everybody. The school was very remarkable, very understanding, um, very helpful. A lot of students lost their computers that day. Um, and I don't, I think my kids took their school computers so they didn't lose them. But they were very um, understandable and they were able to replace those computers that students had lost from the fires. So it, it, it worked out for the situation that many were in. Um, they also were bringing in hot spots, trying to bring in um, hot spots to student areas so students can continue learning online. And um, 
and so they were they would make it so everyone could be a part of school and not stressed about it. I think for the future for change, um, it's really hard to kind of think of the future when there's a lot of things going on right now, like COVID still continues, the droughts continue, the economy is is um, not great right now. So it's really hard to focus on what the future would be, but I think for me is just kind of feeling normal, just that normalization of, um, I know my kids are now into cars and, um, and work and, and just kind of saving up. So I want them to feel like, you know, just feel like a normal teenager working on their cars, being able to go out and, um, and do things and not have to like worry so much about, oh, do I really want to go to Mefford because the gas prices are pretty expensive? Do I really want to drive out there? You know, I just want them to feel like they can do things without having to have that um, worry, worry, worriness in the back of their head. So, and, and for that to change, um, it's hard to say how that, how can that change? Because I think it's, it's a really big, a big, um, like it's not just a little Southern Oregon town problem. It's, it's a whole, uh, nation, na nation problem. So it's really hard to say how to change it. Um, hopefully maybe, I guess maybe things just have to take their course and, um, eventually we kind of can go back into a little bit more of, um, like normalization. Uh, yeah, I hear my, my family stories and how strong they have been and, and their situation. So I think, I think it runs in the family being strong. And, um, and so I think that's why we have been able to be okay, okay with, with what's going on. Well, not that okay, but we're able to, to go persevere. Yeah, it, it comes from generations in the past of, of events that make us who we are today. Yeah. But um, yeah, we're, we're definitely thankful that we have family here. <laughs>